Now let's talk about the fun stuff. Here's where the math comes in. The size of the IV drop is regulated by the IV tubing set being used. Okay, that means that in that drip chamber, when you see those drops come down, the volume or how much fluid is in that drop, the size of that drop is regulated by the tubing set that you're using. Now you don't have to memorize this, but most hospitals have more than one size of infusion tubing. You'll just have to see when you get to the hospital and you're working in that setting. The cool part is you don't have to memorize it. The drip rate, now see that word, GTT, that's drip, and that's how we abbreviate that. So when we say a drip rate, we also see GTT. The drips per mil is printed on each IV tubing package. Let's take a look. You have macro drip tubing and micro drip tubing. Now we use macro drip tubing with adults. Now look at that box right there with the number 10 in it, it says, 10, that means it takes 10 drops in this particular tubing to make one milliliter. So that's the drop factor of the tubing. 10 drops to make one milliliter. That means when I'm counting how much volume the patient is getting and I'm setting the rate manually, I'd look at the drops and I would have to count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That would equal one milliliter. Now you notice when I did that counting, it may have been annoying for you, but sometimes it was slow and sometimes it was fast. That's what happens when you adjust the roller clamp. The tighter the roller clamp, the more pressure it's putting on the tubing, the slower the drops will go. You back off on that roller clamp and you have less pressure on the tubing, the faster the drops will go. Okay, so that's what you wanna know that you control the drop rate by how tight that roller clamp is or how loose that roller clamp is. If the roller clamp is backed all the way off, it's gonna flow really fast. You probably won't be able to count the drops because it's just gonna be a solid stream. So we have macro drip tubing and micro drip tubing. Now macro drip sets have 10 drops per mil, 15 drops per mil, or 20 drops per mil. Remember, GTT means drops. So this example we have in the big box, so you see 10, that would be 10 drops per mil, but other sets can be 15 or 20. You just have to look at the package that the tubing comes into. This is what we predominantly use for adults. Now we have micro drip tubing. It's 60 drops per mil. Wow, I would hate to count this, but it's 60 drops per mil. You'll see this if it's really crucial medication or with our pediatric patients because they are so sensitive to volume. Now the practice questions we give you are not gonna be 60 drops per mil. Thank goodness. We're gonna stick with the macro drip, but we wanted you to know that that type of tubing is out there and used with very special populations. Now let's look at some IV fluid order examples. Most often an IV order will be written with an hourly rate for the IV fluid. I'm gonna show you three examples of what you might see in a patient's chart. 0.9% normal saline at 125 mils per hour. That means I'm gonna hang a bag of normal saline, 0.9%, and I'm gonna, I want it to run at 125 mils in an hour. So that I want that patient to receive 125 milliliters of normal saline every hour. I'll hang it and that will just continue to flow. It doesn't give me any type of time limit, how much to put in, it just says start an IV going at 125 an hour. Now as a responsible nurse, I'm gonna keep communicating with the healthcare provider and see how long the patient needs to continue this level of therapy. But let's look at a different order. Ah, what's different about this one is it tells us just for eight hours. Now, if you multiply 125 times eight, that should come up to 1,000 milliliters. Well, this indicates the healthcare provider wants his patient to just get 125 milliliters per hour for eight hours. Roughly, they're gonna get 1,000 milliliters of fluid in. After the eighth hour, the IV should be discontinued if the healthcare provider has not ordered additional fluids. 
Now look at the third order. This one says 0.9% normal saline at 125 milliliters per hour for a total of 2,000 milliliters or two liters. Okay, so these are just three different formats of how you might see an IV order. The first one, I'm gonna hang the IV and it's going to continue at 125 milliliters an hour. I'm gonna keep a really close eye on my patient because anytime I hang IV fluid, we're risking fluid volume overload, and I'm gonna keep communicating with the healthcare provider to see if we need to continue at this rate. Orders number two and three tell me exactly how long the healthcare provider wants that IV to continue. The second order for eight hours, and the third order says 125 mils an hour till two liters or 2,000 milliliters have been infused into my patient.